Statistics and Excel. Correlation random number generation example. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with statistics and Excel. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon left-hand side, OneNote presentation, 1730 correlation random number generation example tab. We're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so that you can go to the view tab, immersive reader tool, change the language if you so choose, be able to then either listen to or read the transcript in multiple languages using the timestamps to tie into the video presentations. OneNote desktop version here, thinking about correlation, having different data sets to see whether or not there's a mathematical relation or correlation between them. In other words, are the data points and the different data sets moving together in some way, shape, or form? If there is a mathematical relation or correlation between the different data sets, the next logical question would be, is there a cause and effect relationship which is causing the correlation or mathematical relation between the different data sets? And if there is a causal relation between the different data sets, the next logical question would be, what's the causal factor in the causal relationship which is causing the correlation or mathematical relation between the different data sets? Now, in prior presentations, we thought about a perfect positive and a perfect negative correlation, which are great to consider in theory, but which are not usually the examples we have in practice, where we don't have a perfect correlation. We usually have uh, some kind of trend. We saw that in another example where we had a very simple trend of only four data points, so we can really analyze the formula that we're putting together in a simple, small, or low data point example. This time we'll have more data points, but we'll actually generate the data points to get a conceptual understanding of how we're generating the data points and then what we might assume would happen therefore with the correlation and then we'll map that out. We'll also take a look at what it means to have randomness to some degree and what randomness kind of looks like as we go through here. So we're just going to imagine we generate in Excel our data, random data one with this formula, random between, and then we're just picking the, the low number, the bottom number one to 100. Excel generating random numbers then between uh, one and 100. We're going to do that two times over. So we then created a second data set, same fashion to do so and that's going to be the data that we will be using. Now, when we do this in Excel, Excel will keep on regenerating these random numbers. So we're going to imagine that we copy this information over, paste it over here. So now we have static numbers, which will not keep shuffling around that are randomly uh, generated. Now, if I was to just think about how we created those numbers, we can make some assumptions based on what we've done in the past. We could say, well, first I randomly generated numbers not in accordance to a normal distribution or a Poisson distribution or anything like that, but more so towards like a uniform distribution because we had random numbers which could equally come up between a certain interval between zero or one and a hundred. We also know that we generated these two data sets the same way. So they're kind of related in that way. They're gonna be numbers between one and a hundred, but they're not connected in, in any other way in terms of how we created the two data sets. So we might have a hypothesis then that they wouldn't be highly correlated between them, right? Because they're not exactly connected. So we'll, we'll kind of test those out as we go. Now, first I want to look at it pictorially. Let's say we took just this first data set and we, and we made a histogram of it. We counted all of the numbers here and see if they how many fall into the buckets of 1 to 18, 18 to 35, and so on and so forth. And, and you can see that it's not a bell curve type of shape or anything like that. It's going to, if we did this indefinitely, it would tend towards a uniform distribution or a, a straight line type of distribution, right? If we did this indefinitely, we would expect kind of an even outcome because they all have kind of an equal chance. Now, if we did this for the second one, same kind of thing. It looks different here. Uh, because just because of the randomness that happened here but you would expect the same kind of trend line where it would trend towards a uniform distribution it's not a bell curve or anything like that it would tend towards a straight line type of distribution now the fact that these both are kind of similar in nature may give us some understanding about the data sets but doesn't necessarily mean that they're correlated 
uh, either. So, so then we're going to do our mathematical calculation. So we'll say, okay, let's do the the mean and the standard deviation for the first data set, which would be the average formula, the average summing up all of the data dividing by the data points gives us 48.82. The standard deviation is going to be the standard deviation of a sample this time of the first data set. That's a measure of the spread. 29, 30, uh, 73. I got dyslexic there for a second. If we did that with a mean, summing up all of this stuff and taking the average divided by the units, we get to the 49, 51. And for the standard deviation, if we took all of this with the standard dev dot s, we get 26, uh, uh, 56. Now, these could give us some indication where it's like the mean is similar and the standard deviations are similar. So we might we might kind of start to think, well, maybe they're kind of uh, related in that way. There might, and, and these these look kind of uh, together, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a relation because, again, there is there's not like a direct relationship in the way we created the numbers other than we create them in a similar fashion uh, in terms of the random numbers between a certain interval. So let, let's do our calculations here and say uh, that actually before I do that, let's actually graph this thing out. If I took these two and made a scatter plot of them, graphing them together, it would look something like this. So now we've got the scatter plot. If I was to do this, it would automatically take the first random and make it on the left. I'm sorry, make it the X. So the random one is the X. In this case, I don't really know which should be the independent or dependent. So normally we put the independent factor over here if we know it, but we don't really know what it is. There isn't really one here because we made them completely separately. We just used, in essence, the same technique to make the two data sets. So you can see here that if we plot these together, we get somewhat of a, of a random jumble of of data points, so somewhat of a random jumble. And if we plot the if we plot the curve in there, the trend line, we get a little bit of a so there's a little bit of a correlation, but downward sloping, but not a high correlation. Obviously, you can't really see it if you didn't have the trend line. You, you wouldn't even see a general pattern right here, uh, generally with the dots. Now, if I was to switch the the x and y's then remember, you're still going to get that slight downward sloping. It's not going to change to an upward uh, sloping line. And so now we just changed the the X and the Y's. In this case, we don't we can see the same relation and we don't know which is the independent or dependent factor. Now, just to get an idea of what randomness looks like versus what often people have in their mind of randomness, we did another data set just to kind of show this. Uh, and this one, we actually kind of put a, a system together to create our two data sets. What we did is we just took, we counted by five, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, up to 100 here. And then we did the same thing here, but we staggered it. That's our starting point. I staggered it and we made, we said 5, 10, 15, 20, but